Welcome to Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for this Friday, September 14th, 2012. We begin with a story from the world of nanotechnology. Scientists in Germany are going to develop portable electronics for the processing of chemicals. These devices are called microagents, which stands for Microscopic Chemically Reactive Electronic Agents. Essentially 3D microchips that contain advanced sensors, energy storage, and actuator technology designed to turn pre-programmed electrical information into physical chemical results. How they do this is quite interesting. The devices are designed to self-assemble into pairs like dominoes and in doing so create temporary reaction chambers. As you can imagine, this is a drastically different approach to chemistry, which is normally done in industrial scale reaction chambers. With this method, microscale reactors are placed in a solution and can perform a number of functions. These lablet microchips not only facilitate chemistry, but can monitor and record information on progress, even exchanging chemical and electrical information when they pair up. Eventually, they will be complex enough to replicate the information they contain chemically, but will be unable to replicate their circuitry components. Development will continue as this is potentially very useful application for nanotechnology. Using self-assembling devices to assist in the synthesis of complex chemicals and using the sensing and computational capabilities to adapt to various conditions in solution. Our final story is an update from the world of biotechnology, particularly as it applies to the environment. Again, we're discussing waste treatment, not using urine to capture carbon dioxide, but returning to microbial fuel cells. As we've discussed before, it is possible to generate electrical power from wastewater using microbes. They naturally break down organic material in the waste and in the process produce electrons as a byproduct. An Oregon State University team is designing a fuel cell like this that is expected to produce double the energy of conventional microbial fuel cells at 2.87 watts per liter of wastewater. This increase in performance is attributed to adjusting the kinds of microbes used, as well as maximizing the amount of electrodes in the fuel cell design. It gets even better. A separate group has a way of making biodegradable plastics from the bioproducts of wastewater treatment, particularly methane. Currently, a common biodegradable plastic called PHA is made from genetically engineered bacteria, but the process is unfortunately expensive and requires the bacteria to get actively fed sugar and other nutrients. Previous attempts have been made to turn the solids from wastewater into plastics, but the source has such very composition the resulting material wasn't very stable. However, the methane-based process works well using a kind of microbe that feeds on methane and can produce polymers. They're called methanothropes. It even makes economical sense, and the biodegradable plastic is actually worth more by mass than the methane used to produce it. If both of these systems were fully developed and implemented, it could be an incredible win-win for environmental technology, turning waste treatment into something that both generates power and environmentally friendly materials. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider subscribing and be sure to check the links in the video description.